I was in a, a band called Junior's Eyes, and the leader of the group was a, was a chap called Mick Wayne, who'd been kind of fairly well established, um, done a few session jobs here and there, and he got called in to do, to play guitar, play electric guitar on Space Oddity. And um, Mick did the session, I remember him coming back and saying how he had this great, you know, done this great session, and it was really exciting and everything, and David Bowie and everything. and. Um, Basically, uh, at the time, David was looking around to, to, to do some, some live performance, I think as a sort of a tryout, because he hadn't really, uh, you know, as far as I was aware, didn't have a, um, a band to kind of play with him. Um, and was looking around for, for, a, for a group, and Junior's Eyes was suggested as the fact that it was a mixed, mixed band, really. And so the, the band was sort of promptly hauled into the studio, that was the Trident Studios in St Anne's Court, to, uh, to do some, cut some tracks with him. It was kind of an odd mixture of, of, of stuff. I think David at the time was very involved with a local um, uh, folk club that he virtually ran, as far as I can gather, in Beckenham. And he was very involved with, with the running of it. And so there was this kind of mixture of folk influences in there. Um, and a whole lot of other stuff as well. It was quite, and I think people basically didn't really know what to make of David at the time. He was sort of, he'd come from this you know, slightly theatrical background. He'd done his mime thing with Lindsay Kemp and stuff and studied that. And he'd also had his kind of Anthony Newley phase of you know, the laughing gnome. And so I, I think just he probably didn't really, he hadn't sort of found his niche at that point. And so there was kind of a varied assortment of, of um, material there. It's quite, quite a mixed sort of batch of, of stuff. <laughs> Tony was, was basically producing the sessions that we did, the, the main stage. Gus just did um, the Space Oddity track. I don't believe he even did the B-side, I think it was just that one song that, that Gus did. I sort of got the impression that David was quite nervous and quite sort of highly strung, especially in the early sort of days. And I'm sure having Tony around there to sort of reassure him and keep things, you know, calm and you know, create a nice atmosphere to work in, which is a big part of production anyway, isn't it, really? Tony was, was pretty much starting up as a producer in his own right, and um, I think he was also an arranger, but he was, he was sort of emerging as a sort of talent, so everyone was kind of finding their feet. And I think probably everyone felt that, you know, there was no distinct direction there that was obvious, you know, so it was kind of definitely a suck it and see kind of thing, you know. Um, I don't think there was an. I don't think people were sort of thinking, right? Let's make a rock star out of David or anything like that. You know, it was really building a, a, an album around the fact that, that the, the track "Space Oddity" had caused such a lot of interest. You know, and it's kind of a very unusual song, and you know, caught uh, people's imagination. I remember he was, he was very much getting over the, the, the death of his father because I remember on one occasion um, he was doing some a vocal overdub and he, he sort of broke down in the middle of it and uh, he was obviously feeling, you know, a very sensitive guy and he was going through some changes there. hadn't really had much experience fronting a, a band you know. and so the, the idea was that it was suggested that we did this sort of mini tour with him which was actually five or six dates in Scotland um, and so we sort of went up there I was probably I, was, I think I was about 20 at the time so it was all sort of young chaps having a laugh you know and nutty I mean there was one gig where the I think it was the one in Glasgow the electric garden in Glasgow where uh, the promoter erected a cage in front of the band because he said that sometimes if, if, the, if the crowd liked the band, they threw bottles. So we, we wondered what they did when the crowd didn't like the band. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. We'd had a lot of experience on the road. Um, that was our main strength really with Junior's Eyes is we just played all over the place. And, you know, we did all kinds of things from the Star Club in Hamburg to whatever, you know, just all over Europe up and down the country, universities and everything. And that was the one thing that David didn't have, was that sort of confidence of playing sort of spit and sawdust gigs, really. So I suppose, that, I mean, we just kind of carried it off without too much thought, I think. 
But I think David was quite nervous. It was a very alien atmosphere for him, really. Our very last gig as Julia's Eyes was at the Marquee Club and we supported David Bowie and, and most of the band got up and played with David after, after we'd played a set. And that was called The Hype, it went on the name of The Hype. But in actual fact it was the only, the only gig we ever did in, with that lineup. Um, and that was John Cambridge on drums and myself on guitar, uh, Tony Visconti on bass and David on, you know, rhythm guitar, acoustic guitar and, and vocals obviously. And, um, Subsequently, several people kind of remind you know, sort of said, "Oh, you played with the hype, didn't you?" And I said, "No, I never heard of them." What was that? Oh, David, but no, no. But that was the only time that actually occurred. That was at the Marquee Club. And then after that, David sort of linked up with uh, Mick Ronson, who he'd got to hear about. So he's a very good friend of John Cambridge, the drummer. They're both from Hull. They both played in a group called the Rats, and so that's how that kind of link up happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, and Mick kind of got involved, and to start with. Um, uh, Tony Visconti carried on playing bass, I think dressed as Superman or something, I think he... <laughs> yes, extraordinary.